Today is a big day for Martian astronomy. My measuring machine is ready to be tested. How can you measure stars billions of light years away? I'll show you. Switch on. Sounds as if it's got hiccups. I think it's going to blow up. Switch off. It uh, needs adjusting, that's all. Are you sure? Quite sure. It's fixed now. Switch on again. Where are my glasses? You left them in the machine. They've gone. Gone where? they vanished. What nonsense. Now where could they be? I tell you, you left them in the machine. Well, they're not there now. I can't work without my glasses. Switch off till I find them. <laughs> they were here all the time. They vanished and then they came back. Look, Professor, I'll prove it. Now I'll switch off. There's no doubt about it, Professor. You've invented a machine for making things vanish. It's fantastic. I must tell Colonel Rayburn at once. Professor Zephyr is calling you from the Martian Observatory, Colonel Rayburn. Put him on the video screen. I have astonishing news, Colonel. I've just made a machine that makes things disappear. Now look, Professor. I've too many problems of my own to waste time talking about conjuring tricks. Oh, it's no trick, Colonel. It's true, and I'll prove it. Did you hear that nonsense, Marla? Yes, Colonel. But I fear you were unnecessarily rude to Professor Zephyr. Oh, I suppose I was. But it's because I'm worried about this new disease that's attacking our colonists on the moon. Is that the disease everyone calls the floats? Yes. It's caused by living where there's very little gravity. The muscles lose their strength and you die. So that is why many colonists want to return to Earth and Venus. Yes. If we can't find a cure, we'll have to evacuate the moon and all our satellites. But that could mean the end of space patrol. I know. Professor Haggerty is working on a cure, but he's had no luck yet. Order my monobile, Marla. I'm going to see him. I'm sure I've got the answer to this problem. Oh, Pop, it'll be wonderful if you can cure the floats. Do you mean you found the cure, Professor? I think so, Colonel. And don't call me Pop. The cure. Tell me about it. See that egg? That's an egg? Where in space do square eggs come from? Mars. <laughs> I might have known it. It's an Aber egg, Colonel. The Aber birds are very rare, and they lay three eggs a year. One egg is round, and two are square. What's that got to do with curing the floats? Well, the round egg hatches out into an Aber bird, but the square eggs are eaten for food. Very interesting, but I... The yolk of the square eggs contains some special protein that cures the floats. That's wonderful. Congratulations, Professor. When can we start making this yolk stuff into pills? We can't. There isn't enough of it. There are only 20 abers left in the whole of Mars. What? We might be able to make this egg yolk artificially, but we need a few more square eggs to experiment with. I'll send Larry Dart to Mars to collect as many as he can. There's no time to lose. But, Colonel... I'll, I'll speak to you later. I must contact Dart. But, Colonel, if it's you listen... It's no I... use. He's gone. <laughs> I wish Gabler was here. I miss him. I thought things were quiet around here without that bird of yours. Where is he? I sent him back to Mars for a holiday. He wanted to see his friend. Well, 
Captain Larry Dart, report to Colonel Rayburn immediately. Here we go again. This assignment sounds easy. I used to collect bird's eggs when I was seven. Good. I hope... Uh, uh, yes, Marla? The Martian president is on the sonar beam. He wishes to talk to you. Mm, this sounds like trouble. Good day, Colonel Rayburn. I'm told you want to collect some Ava eggs. Yes, sir. If you have no objection. I have no objection at all. But I must warn you, the Avas are very fierce, and they won't allow anyone to come near them. The only way to get the eggs is to kill the birds. We dare do that. There are only 20 Avas left. And if we can't find a way of making the yolk artificially, we'll be needing as many birds alive as possible. Well, I'm warning you, Colonel. Getting those eggs will be very difficult and dangerous. I'm putting my best space patrolman on the job. Good. If you need any help, let me know. Still want to go, Dart? Certainly. Would you please ask Slim and Husky to go to contamination control? I have already done so. You think of everything, Marla. A Venusian has the facility never to forget. I wonder where Colonel Rayburn is sending us this time. We can be sure of one thing. It won't be home to Mars. Or even home to Venus. One of you is wrong, I'm afraid. Husky, we're going to Mars. Wonderful. Now I'll be able to see Gabla. Get rid of your Earth germs, Slim. We've no time to waste. Why are we going to Mars, Captain? To collect eggs. I love eggs. Uh, these aren't for eating, Husky. Husky? Orbital speed zero to 20,000 miles an hour. Speed maintained. Scan of you are working. Check. Astro beam working. Check. Gamma rays on. Yoba rays on. All in order, Captain. I'm ready. Thanks. Gallosphere 024 to central control. Ready for final check. All in order. Ready to lift. Takeoff program starting now. My wonderful machine, a conjuring trick. Oh, every time I think of Colonel Raven, I get angry. Ah, uh, Zephyr. Captain Dart has arrived on Mars. He is waiting to go to the Dictum Forest to get some Ava eggs. But the game warden is still away on patrol. I wonder if you'd care to show him your observatory while he's waiting. Well, I would be delighted to. Thank you. I will send him over. <laughs> Captain Dart here, eh? Hmm. Colonel Raven thinks very highly of him, and if Dart sees my machine in action, maybe he will tell Raven that it isn't a stupid trick. Come in. Ah, I was expecting you. Good afternoon, Professor Zephyr. I'm Larry Dart of Space Patrol, and this is Husky, a member of my crew. Make yourself at home here, gentlemen, and ask any questions you like. What's that? Ah, my newest machine for measuring stars. Sounds interesting. Oh, you'd be surprised how interesting. Oh, this machine can make things disappear. Disappear? Yes. To show you I'm not cheating, I, I, I'll use something of yours. Will this do? Yes. Place it in the cubicle and then come out. Now I will switch on. It's, it's gone. gone. Now I'll switch off. It's fantastic. Does Colonel Rayburn know about this? Well, I tried to tell him, but he wouldn't listen. Well, that's because he's worried about the colonists. But I'll talk to him when I get back. I've never seen a machine do such a thing before. I would be very grateful if you could get Colonel Rayburn to come here. Who turned the machine on? I did. 
I tripped. That's Hunsky's voice. Where are you? I'm here, uh, but I'm not here. Uh, Captain, I become invisible. Professor Zephyr, did you know this machine made human beings disappear? No, I didn't, but uh, don't worry. Uh, when I turn it off, he'll come back. <laughs> there you are, Captain. I'm afraid not, Professor. Good gracious. Look, no hands. <laughs> Get back. Get back. I'll switch on and then I'll switch off again. Maybe that will do the trick. It's no good. I'm still not here. This is terrible, Professor. What can you do? I don't know. I, I can't understand it. Can you tell me how this machine works, Professor? Then maybe I can help you find a way of bringing Husky back. Well, uh, look at this diagram. It's a funny feeling to be invisible. I think I'll get out of this suit. Everything is made up of molecules. And this picture shows part of a piece of wood. Now, between each molecule, you will see little gaps. Well, my machine makes these gaps bigger. Then the light is able to pass straight through them, and the wood becomes invisible. What happens when the machine is switched off? The molecules go back together again, and everything is normal. Well, Husky's spacesuit returned to normal. Why didn't he? Maybe human molecules behave differently. It might be more difficult for them to go back to their original shape. I don't care what shape I go back to. Husky, where are you? Oh! You trod on my foot. Sorry. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to take off my spacesuit. Well, put it on again, Husky. At least we can see where you are, even if we can't see who you are. I will have to keep working until I have found a way to make human molecules behave like other molecules. How long will that take? Weeks, months, maybe years. Oh. Don't worry, Husky. We'll think of something. I better tell Rayburn what's happened. He'll be very angry. At least you can prove that your machine works. Husky, invisible? Preposterous! It's true, sir. You can see for yourself. Of all the... <laughs> Dart, where are you? All right. You've convinced me. Now tell Zephyr to stop playing the fool and make Husky visible again. But he can't. That's what I've been telling you. Well, put Husky on the next rocket flight back to Earth. He'll have to go into hospital. Can I bring him back myself, sir? He's feeling rather miserable. No, Dart. Your mission is to collect the Aba eggs. We need them urgently. 300 colonists on our television satellite are seriously ill with the floats. Very well, sir. As soon as the game warden arrives, I'll leave for the dictum forest. Colonel Rayburn is angry. If I get the Aba eggs, he'll calm down. I will see if the game warden has returned. I don't want to go back to Earth, Captain. I want to stay on Mars. You heard what Rayburn said. You're a spaceman, not a civilian. You've got to obey orders. Who ever heard of an invisible spaceman? Where's Husky? I heard Husky's here. And if Husky's here, then I want to see him. I recognize that gentle little voice. If only Professor Haggerty hadn't taught the gabbler bird to speak English. Where's Husky? I've come to see him. Gabbler, what a lovely surprise. Here I am. Where? Here. I can't see you. What is this, hide and seek? Come on out. I'm not in the mood for games. It isn't a game. What's this? It looks like Professor Haggerty's bird song machine. Keep away from that machine, Gabbler. It's dangerous. Well, why didn't you say so before? I'm a very brave bird, but I don't like anything dangerous. Here I am, Gabbler. It's a walking suit. Oh! Get away from me! Get away from me! Husky, save me! I am Husky. No, you're not. You're a spacesuit. But I'm in the spacesuit, Gabla. I'm invisible. The game warden is back. If you will come downstairs, Captain Dot, I will take you to his office. What about Husky? Uh, tell him to wait in the observatory. I will arrange his rocket flight. Goodbye, Husky. See you back on Earth. What does he mean? See you? No one can see you. You're right, Gabla. And you've given me an idea. I'm going with Dot. He'll send you back. He won't be able to see me. I'm getting out of this suit. What about me? What'll I do? Ask Professor Zephyr to send you back to Earth. You've had quite enough of a holiday. <laughs> Do 
Dickham Forest is a long way from here, Captain. We'll have to use hover jets. Did you see that? The door opened by itself. I expect it's the wind. About these hover jets, sir, I've got some in the gallosphere. Good. Let's get them. What's the matter with it? It doesn't seem to be lifting. Ah, that's better. Was your hover jet flying all right? Yes. Why? Something's wrong with mine. It needed extra boost, as though I was carrying something heavy. Look at that. What? I can't see anything. That's funny. There must be something wrong with my eyes. Is that an Aba? Yes. We must be very careful. An Aba wound is extremely painful. with its horn. Let me see. Mmm, nasty. I must rest it at once. Leave it for the moment, Warden. I've got to think of a way of getting those eggs. The only way is to kill the bird. I was ordered not to do that. I better talk to Colonel Rayburn. My radio isn't powerful enough to reach Earth. Just connect me with the Gallosphere. Then Slim can relay the message. It is lonely without Husky and Captain Dot. Ah, Captain, how are things progressing? They're not progressing at all. It's impossible to get near an Aba bird. The only way is to kill it. Now contact Rayburn and ask him if I can kill the Aba. I will do so immediately. I'm sorry, Slim, but I can't allow any Abas to be killed. There are only 20 left on the whole of Mars, and we'll need their eggs. But if Professor Hackerty can make the yolks artificially... He isn't sure he can. And until he is sure, these eggs are worth their weight in plutonite. What shall I tell Captain Dark? He must get those eggs without any killing. No killing. A lot of help that is. I'd rather fight a crocodile than an Aba. At one time, I believed they were tame. But Martians started to hunt them, and it made them vicious. If we could get close to one and show it we meant no harm, then... I wouldn't want to get close to an Aba. But I've got to get those eggs somehow. my arm again, but I'll be all right in a minute. I'll get my first aid. There is definitely something wrong with my eyes. I tripped. Husky, I might have guessed. Husky, you're brilliant. Will someone tell me what's going on? I'd like you to meet the Martian member of my crew, Husky. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Professor Zephyr made me invisible. It's a good thing he did. We'd never have got those eggs otherwise. It was very clever of you to come along. Thank you, Captain. Here, you'd better take these. I've nowhere to put them. Look out. Dave is coming after its eggs. Run for it. <laughs> What's happening? It's laughing. I'm tickling her. 
Pretty Ava. Nice Ava. Good Ava. Didn't I tell you Abas could be tamed? There, there, Ava. You've nothing to worry about. We've only taken two square eggs and we've left you the round egg to hatch. Come on, Husky. Let's go while we can. Professor Haggerty is waiting for those eggs. There. It's all done. I know now what these eggs are made of, and I'll be able to make the yolks artificially in the test tubes. So Captain Dart won't need to get any more Aba eggs for us? He certainly won't. Call him up and tell him so. I can't. He's visiting Husky in hospital. The poor Martian is still invisible. Good news, boys. The professor's experiment has succeeded. We'll now be able to cure the floats. I wish you could cure me. Poor Husky. How are you feeling? It's not how I'm feeling, it's how I'm not looking. Now that Professor Haggerty's not busy, do you think he could help Husky? Go and ask him, Dart. I will. I'm sure Haggerty will make me visible. He's cleverer than all the other doctors rolled up inside out. You mean rolled up together? Old Zephyr's machine sounds very interesting, uh, but uh, what went wrong with Husky? The molecules of lifeless things regain their shape as soon as the machine is switched off. But Husky's alive, and his molecules didn't regain their shape. Ah, the answer's very simple, me boy. Make Husky's molecules lifeless. You mean kill him? No, 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 no. I mean freeze him. I don't understand. Put Husky into the freezer. Then his molecules will be almost still. And what do we do then? Put Husky into Zephyr's machine. I'll tell Colonel Rayburn. Professor, you're a genius. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> and what's more, I'm an Irish genius. Captain Dart, Colonel Raven was just telling me of Professor Haggerty's suggestion. I hope it works. Oh, so do I. Shall we leave Husky in the portable freezer? Yes. I will switch on now. Now I will switch off again. It worked. Thank goodness. We must get Husky out of the freezer. I hope he will be all right. Don't worry, Husky. You're visible. I know, and I'm also hungry. Now I know you're well again. Thank <laughs> you.